ever increasing glory and this is our month of favor divine favor favor praise god um, i'm saying this with all sense of responsibility i sense in my spirit an escalation of god's favor upon our individual lives and upon this church the bible says it is not of him that willeth or of him that runneth it is of the lord that showeth mercy the favor of God does not mean that you not invest any time or effort. The, the favor of God simply is an operation of the grace and mercy and kindness of God that comes upon you to escalate your efforts. So that when you see the final effort, even though you have put in some kind of effort, when you see the final result, I mean, you will know of a certainty that it is not your efforts that brought you to where you are. So God's grace does not cancel our effort. It simply escalates it. So I see the hand of God resting upon you like never before this month in every, every endeavor of your life. I see, I see difficult challenges and problems being, being resolved. I see complicated situations becoming simple because we are living in a season of the escalation of God's favor. So this, I, I want to encourage you, if you did not get, if you, if you are not in the first service last week, I want to encourage you to get that message because the Spirit of God helped us do some pretty, I mean, those points were given to us by the Holy Ghost how you can cooperate with the favor of God and walk in the favor of God. Okay, the message is out there. I'm sure if you go to our YouTube page, you'll be able to get it. Praise the Lord. And get it and flow with it. The Holy Spirit is giving us thoughts concerning how we can escalate in favor. Now, why do we need to escalate in the favor of God? Why does the favor of God need to increase? Primarily, yes, God wants his people blessed, but it's because there's a great job to be done. Psalm, verse 30, verse, uh, Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Oh Lord, he said, in your favor there is life. Joy, um, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Verse 7 says, O Lord, by thy favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. And when you talk about your mountain, you're talking about, um, you're talking about um, the, 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 your endeavors and the things you're involved in, the things you're building. The mountain symbolizes man's, the fruit of man's labor, the fruit of man's effort. The Bible said, it is by your favor that you cause my mountain to be strong. But let's start off this way from Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Our thought this evening is the fragrance of favor. The fragrance of favor. That's how the Holy Ghost gave it to us. Favor is a fragrance and I see that fragrance resting upon you. Resting upon you. Resting upon you. Resting upon you like never before you know it was said in the story of esther remember when queen vashti the wife or the queen of um king ahasuerus misbehaved and she was cut off and ostracized from the kingdom and they were about to get her and they were getting in the process of getting a replacement for queen vashti and that's where esther's story came in and she was amongst the virgins that they scouted the entire realm of the kingdom um, to get a, a person to be a suitable successor. And um, without going too much into this into Esther's story, but one of the things that they made all of those ladies do was that for, for several months, they, they just soaked them, soaked them in all kind of precious oils so that they would be appealing to the king. Are you here somebody? And there's no scripture that has, no scripture does not have significance when it comes to redemption and when it comes to Christ. There is a fragrance that comes out of you when you're soaked in something. Well, you know, you don't even have to be soaked too much in perfume these days, depending on how strong it is. Sometimes there's some sense that when you just put it on, sometimes it can just linger. Even after you've changed your clothes, even after your bath, there's some sense that are so strong. I guess that I, I think that some way they are just programmed to get into the pores of your skin and into your bloodstream or whatever it is, and then it just keeps, it just keeps lingering on for a long time. But I, that's a sense I got from the Holy Ghost um, about this service. The Spirit of God kept telling me the fragrance of God's favor. And it's going to mark you with the fragrance of his favor. It's not about how tall or short you are, how beautiful or handsome you are. Every one of us is beautiful and handsome in Jesus' name. But it's about the hand of God upon you. And some things are going to become escalated in your life as a result of this fragrance of favor. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. 
And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse him that curses you, and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now let's look at that from the Amplified Classic translation, please. I want to see tonight that the favor of God is an essential ingredient, a core component in the blessing of Abraham. And Galatians 3.29 said, If ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and you are heirs according to the promise. So, when the Bible is talking about Abraham, you have to find yourself in Abraham. See yourself in Abraham. If ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, heirs according to the same promise. Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abraham, Go for yourself, for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives, and from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. And I'll make of you a great nation, and I will bless you with the abundant increase of favors. That was Abraham's secret. We said that this abundant increase of favors is a core component of the blessing of Abraham. And Galatians 3.29 says, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed, and you are heirs. It's your inheritance. You are heirs according to that same promise. So what he told Abraham, he has told us in Christ. So this is Abraham's blessing, charter blessing. I will bless you with the abundant increase of favors. So you should expect it as a child of God. That means there's going to be an increase, an abundant increase of favors, plural, in your life. Are you somebody? Now Philemon verse 6 said that the acknowledging of your faith becomes effectual. The communicating of your faith rather... The exercise of your faith becomes effective as you acknowledge every good thing in you in Christ Jesus. What does it mean to acknowledge? To acknowledge means to believe it, are you somebody, and to declare it. So this was Abraham's promise. This was what distinguished him. This blessing, one of the core manifestations of the blessing of, God, of Abraham is the abundant increase of favors. And Proverbs 10, 27 it is that says, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. The applied class said there's no toiling associated with it. It did not say there's no labor or work associated with it. It said there's no toiling. Toiling means fretful, worried, and anxious labor. Laboring under intense pressure and not wondering or not, and not, not knowing whether or not your labor will produce any, any yield. I hear somebody. That's not the character of the blessing of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is worry-free, anxiety-free. Why? Because we're trusting the one who put that blessing on us. We're not trusting in our own ability or in our own strength. Are you here, somebody? The apostle Paul said this way when he was talking about his, his partnership with Apollos. He said, I, Paul, planted, Apollos watered, but who gave the increase? No man can increase himself. The best you can do is cooperate with God and put in the effort that God has allowed you to put in. But you must trust God for the harvest. Are you here, somebody? They say, I'll make your name famous and distinguished, and you'll be a blessing. Look at this. Dispensing good. This is the reason for this abundant increase of favors. How much? It doesn't take too much for you to live a good life, but God wants you to be a dispenser of good. Not just of material good, but of spiritual good. Are you here, somebody? God wants you to walk in health, and he wants your hands to be channels for God's healing power to others. God wants you to walk in peace and to be a distributor of peace. God wants you to walk in joy and to be a distributor of joy. And the primary way you distribute joy is to, is to, to, to lead others to Christ. And you will be a blessing, dispensing, look at, dispensing good to others. And I'll bless those who bless you, who comfort prosperity or happiness upon you, and curse him who curses you or use insolent language against toward you. And in you will all the families and kindreds of the earth be blessed. Say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed to be a blessing. And we've said this, the best repetition, that no matter what level of life you are right now, see yourself in the blessing of Abraham. Don't wait until one time in the future. With where you are now, start blessing others. Because as you make yourself a blessing, you're, you're, you're educating your mind and telling your mind that you are not a victim. Are you somebody? And that there's no lack and there's more than enough. It's the easiest way to break out. You, you have to break out of a sense of lack in your mind before you start seeing it in your life. So never tell yourself that uh, even the one I have is not enough to give out. No, it's never, it is always enough to give somebody else. 
Because your future is in what you dispense, not what you take. Your future is in what you dispense. I say your future is in what you dispense. Even the rewards that come to you, your value is in what in the value you contribute to others. So God's giving, this giving life is, is part and parcel of the dynamics of God's kingdom. You become valuable as you add value to others. You become valuable as you contribute to the system. Now let's look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. Just give me straight from the Amplified Classic. We're establishing that a core component of the blessing of Abraham is this abundant increase of favors. We must, be, we must rise to become aware of it and expect it, to believe it and to declare it constantly. Remember, it still works by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. So he, Jesus came to Nazareth, that Nazareth, where he had been brought up and he entered the synagogue as it was his custom on the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. And there was handed to him the roll of the book of the prophet Isaiah. He opened and rolled the book and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, was, he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good, news, the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives. He has sent me to announce the recovery of sight to the blind. He has sent me to send forth as delivered those that are oppressed, who are downtrodden, bruised, crushed, and broken down by calamity. It's all good news. Help me tell you, neighbor, the gospel is all good news. Not a bit of bad news in it. All good news. He sent me to proclaim the accepted and acceptable year of the Lord. The day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. When something is profuse, that means it's coming out with force. So that is the gospel, the announcement that because of what Christ has done, the free favors of God profusely abound. And I tell you, there's something in the favor of God to match any pain or affliction you could ever face. There's something in the favor of God to beat anything the devil can ever do in any believer's life. I like saying it this way. Every time hell does its worst, heaven shows up and does its best. And Christ is heaven's best and he's good enough. Too late, devil. Christ is Jesus' best. I mean, heaven is, Christ is heaven's best and, 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 and Christ is more than enough. Are you here, somebody? So Jesus came proclaiming as the seed of Abraham. Now, Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, please. Jesus came preaching that message because he was connected to Abraham. He's called the seed of Abraham. Galatians chapter 6, verse 16. Now, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He did not say unto seeds as of many, but as of one to thy seed, which is Christ. Now, if you go to Genesis 12, Genesis 15, Genesis 17, when God was giving promise to Abraham and his seed, he never used the word plural, seeds. That's what Paul was trying to establish. That when he was talking to Abraham about his seed, he was not just talking about natural Israel. He was talking about Christ. So, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Let's go ahead. Um, okay, let's go to verse uh, 20, 20, uh, 29. 29. Thank you. And if you be Christ, are you Christ? Yes, no, really. Are you Christ? Yes, Have you received him? Yes, then he's talking about you. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? And you are heirs according to the promise. So they say the abundance of favors. Say the abundant increase in favors Amen. is mine. Amen. Say it again. This abundant increase in favors. Amen. Say is mine. Amen. Right now. Say it again. This abundant increase in favors is mine right now. One more time. Say it again. This abundant increase in favors is mine right now. The favor of God heals sick bodies. The favor of God makes minds to be sound. The favor of God restores, restores peace when there was none. Restores joy when there was none. The favor of God preserves, defends, protects, prospers, gives wisdom, directs. Every essential quality of life is found in the favor of God. I hear somebody. I want to see that this favor is blood bought, is purchased by Jesus. It's purchased by Jesus, is in the inheritance of the church. But you've got to know it's yours, you've got to believe it, and you've got to acknowledge it. You've got to say it to yourself. Say it until it registers in your heart. I hear somebody. You must say it constantly. 
is your weapon, is your tool against anything. I mean, I don't want to go back to what we said on Sunday, but we see that Israel in, in bondage was a type of the church. Pharaoh was a type of what? The devil. Moses, a type of Jesus, the, the deliverer. And um, Egypt, a type of sin and the world that we were delivered from. And we see that when God was talking to Moses, before he even went and had his first confrontation with Pharaoh, he had already told him that I'm going to use the weapon of favor to get Israel out of Egypt. He said, these people are not going to go empty. I'm going to pay them back for 430 years of slavery by the weapon of favor. So you know, favor is not people liking you and smiling at you. Favor is a divine force that compels men to do what God said they should do. Those miracles are manifestation of the power of God that brought, humbled Egypt, brought Pharaoh to his knees. But that is a manifestation of that favor. Are you here somebody? That, oh Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain strong. And I see that favor effective in your life in this hour. He said, I will, I will, I will put my favor or give my people favor, Exodus 3, 21, before the Egyptians. And because of that, they will not go empty. So you can have this favor in your life and go empty. Look, this favor will locate your harvests. This favor will, will, will straighten out every rough road, smoothen it. It will make every rough road and straight, uh, crooked path straight in your life in the name of Jesus. This favor will go and bring your harvest wherever it is in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you here somebody? This favor will restore your dignity. This favor will connect, it, connect you rather to long-awaited harvests. I'll give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and shall come to pass. When they go, they will not be empty. Are you here somebody? So what is this favor? It's a supernatural endowment of force that compels men to be kind to you, to be gracious to you, to accept you and to open their hearts to you. It's also a manifestation of the grace of God. And that's what we read in Luke chapter 4 that our blessed Lord Jesus came to proclaim. The year of God's favor, where salvation and the free fav favors of God profusely abound. Are you here, somebody? It's like when, uh, when, when, when an opposing force invades a land to conquer it, and they overwhelm the armed forces of that other land. That's how Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection has brought us. A force of favor that overwhelms satanic activity. Are you here somebody? Satan can't stand in this favor. Are you here somebody? Let me tell you the nature of favor is that it was paid for by Christ's blood. Paid for by Christ's blood. And I keep sensing the spirit of God telling us that favor is a very essential supernatural sickle or tool or weapon for harvest. You can't get to where you're going, God, without the favor of God. You can't. You can do, your labor can only take you so far. That does not diminish the place of labor or work or diligence, but it can only take you so far. That's why faith has to come in it. Are you here, somebody? I sense in my heart a release of the flow of favor. Amen. And I want to just tell you something. Sabro kayikete. Wherever the favor of God seems to have been shut up, you will start seeing it flow. Amen. Wherever it has been like a trickle, it will soon become a stream. Amen. As you follow the stream, the stream will turn to a river. As you follow the river, the river will turn to a flood. Now I hear the Holy Ghost tell me to tell somebody, follow the flow of favor. Follow it. Follow the flow of favor. Because Akrotomayana, the favor of God is going to start appearing in your life. It's going to start appearing where it was not appearing before. And wherever it was appearing, it will escalate. And I hear the Holy Ghost tell me, don't worry about it. Just follow the flow of favor. It will take you to your desired destination. For by God in this hour, there are going to be, there are going to be signs of favor. Where you have been rejected, you will be accepted in the name of Jesus Christ. Even where you have messed up, God will reinvent opportunity for you. I follow the flow of favor. Follow it. It's not complicated. Just follow the flow of favor. Just follow it. Something about the favor of God is escalating our lives in this season. Listen, Caris is the Greek, the, the, the word grace in the New Testament. And how many, how many of you know grace is all about, the New Testament is all grace. 
Theology has told us that the New Old Testament is Christ concealed. The New Testament is Christ revealed. John chapter 1 verse 14. Of his, of, um, I mean, we, we beheld his glory as of only son of God, right? Full of grace and truth. And the word was made flesh. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten son of God. Full of grace and truth. Full of charis and truth. That's the Hebrew, Greek word for grace. Charis. Because Jesus is the fulfillment of the New Testament. Now, now that Jesus has appeared, Abraham takes a backstage. Because he appeared for Jesus' sake. So this is the grace that was being talked about right from the Old Testament. That is coming. And that is of his fullness have we all received. We have, we have received it. So right now, you are, you are in the fullness of God's favor. Of his fullness have we received. And grace upon grace carries, heaped upon carries. Love gift is a gift. Love gift is a gift. If you work for it, it has removed the gift aspect. It has removed the grace aspect. You receive it by faith because of what Christ has done. Love gift heaped upon love gift. And look at what this charis is. This charis in the Hebrew, in the, in the, in the, in the Greek talks about graciousness. The divine influence of God upon men's hearts. It talks, that grace, it uses the word charm. You know when you're charmed, you become, when somebody is charmed for your sake, it, make, it makes you irresistible. <laughs> I hope you understand what I'm saying tonight. You're going to soak in that favor. You're going to soak in that divine charm. And you're going to become irresistible. When it comes to the good, when it comes to good, they'll say, you are the one for it. When it comes to increase, they'll say, you are the one for it. This divine charm and influence makes men irresistible. Glory to God. I wish somebody would go and check it up in the concordance so you know Pastor Dunka is not lying to you. Is there? Are you here somebody? Believers are receivers. Doubters are going without us. I'm not going to be going without her. In this season, what is mine is coming to me. What is yours is coming to you. No fight. When this favor is in manifestation, nobody can reject you. Even if they do, their rejection means nothing. <laughs> I like the way somebody put it. I mean, I mean, it's not scripture and verse, but that's the essence of it. I mean, it might as well be, have been scripture because that's the essence of what scripture implies. That rejection is simply redirection. Hey, hey, hey. When this favor is upon you, praise God forevermore, they'll gang up against you one way, but they'll scatter seven ways. When they think they have stepped on you here, it's because God is pushing you to the real thing that belongs to you. Sometimes God hides your inheritance in seeming delay and disappointment. Just trust this favor. As I talk, it's flowing right now. As I, as I talk, it's flowing right now. And th this, this thing will mark you. You will start, you'll start carrying a different smell in the spirit. Are you here, somebody? Genesis 27. Let's talk a little bit about this fragrance or scent of favor. I know old Lang King James language used the word smell. I like that, but smell usually is an offensive odor. But I know it didn't use it for offensive, but I prefer to use the word scent. But let's even use smell. 27, 27. Genesis 27, 27. Remember the story? Isaac had gone and asked his elder son Esau. He said he was going weak and age, his eyes were dim and all of that, and it was time for him to release the blessing. I said, my son, go and hunt, go and catch game and make a savory dish for me that thy father might eat and bless thy soul. And uh, Rebecca, their mother, overheard it, but because she had a bias toward Jacob, she went into the, you know, where they keep the animals, goats and everything, took one out, chose one out, killed it, skinned it, prepared it, just to show you how much of a spoiled brat Jacob was. Now mama catch the goat. Now mama kill him. Now mama prepare him. Now mama skin him. Collect this thing. And all he did, he just said, I'm mommy's boy. 
I slap his head. So Jacob was just a spoiled brat. So his mother, mother organized everything for him and put and told him what to do, educated him and how to lie to his father. You know the story how he came and he appeared in the presence of his father. And his father drew, Israel now drew, I mean Jacob, Isaac just drew he himself said, come my son that I might smell you. He was, he was looking for a particular smell, the smell of a field. And Rebecca knew. So she organized it and she put that skin on him and everything. Go and took uh, um, Esau's garment, everything. So when he, the, the father, because his eyes were not seeing well, he smelled, so oh, this Esau, my son. After he had eaten the venison, he began to bless him. Are you here somebody? And this is the blessing he said. And he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him. And said, see, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed with the abundant increase of favors. I hear somebody. Therefore, because of this abundant increase of favors, this is what it will do. The Lord God give you of the dew of heaven. Aya. Of the fatness of the earth. Plenty corn and wine. Able. The blessing is not your car, your house, or your money. The blessing is that intangible substance that rests on you because of anointed words. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee. Ah, yeah. Blessed be he that blessed thee. Now let me just read this on. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob. And Jacob was yet scarce gone out of the presence of Isaac his father. That Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it into his father, unto his father. And said unto his father, let your, my father arise and eat of the son's venison. That thy soul may bless me. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled with exceeding trembling. I said, Who? 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 Where is he that took this venison and brought it to me? And I've eaten all before you came. And I have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. Ah, yeah. The blessing is not a material thing. The blessing is an anointing, an empowerment that rests upon a man or woman. I hear somebody and makes life begin to answer. That's what we should be looking for. We have it in Christ, but we should learn the way of that blessing. When we understand that, we will stop being eye service people because man can't give it to you. Man can see you, but only God can give it to you. Do you realize something? That a man of God may love you, but if, if, he's, if he opens his mouth and blesses you, unless God who anointed him authorizes it, you just empty words? That's why I don't believe in that service. If you know it's God that raises you, you'll face your front and know what you came to look for in church. When he saw heard the words of his father, he cried with a great exceeding bitter cry. Ah, you know this guy cry from. I said to his father, Oh, bless me. Even me also, my father, bless me. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? He has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. And behold, now he has taken away my blessing. Keep me there. I want to explain something. For many years, I was angry. I didn't understand God. I said, well, God, your heavenly father, I can't question you. But I was angry at Jacob. I abused him all the day. Yeah, yeah, boy. Spoiled brat. Mama picking. Yeah, mama go catch good for you. Kill him. Arrange you. Idiot. Nonsense. All day. Then somewhere in my head, I say, you myself, God, you're a partial God now. Until one day, I'm ashamed to say that it wasn't too long ago. Somewhere between three to five years ago, the Lord showed me something. He said, go back to the story now. I went back. When Esau was hungry. Remember that? He came from hunting. And he came and his brother came and prepared red porridge for him. Lentils. No meat inside self. Lentils. Red porridge. This guy was hungry. And he came and said, he saw him preparing food. And Jacob 
because he knew the kind of person his brother was. He knew his brother was a vain fellow who had no respect for spiritual things. So he arranged him and everything. I said, the guy said, give me something to eat. And I said, no, I won't give you. He said, give me now. I'm hungry. Why are you joking like this? He said, no, I, I, I mean, I won't give you until you give me your birthright. Esau knew exactly what Jacob was talking about. He said, what is my birthright to me? I'm hungry. Hunger won't kill me. I beg, come on, take my birthright, Joe. And the Lord said, from that time, he uttered it from his heart. I saw he was a profane. The Bible calls Esau a profane fellow. No value for spiritual things. Too many people in, in the body of Christ now are profane. No value for spiritual things. Spiritual things are far behind. Natural things are in front. It was from that day by himself. Nobody beat him from his heart. He said, what is it to me? And he released it. So by his words, he gave, he opened it and gave anybody the right to take it. So even though Jacob was really subtle, but in the realm of the spirit, he had opened the door. So anybody, because if he did not really do that, God is not an unjust God. The blessing would not have rested. The reason why Isaac was shaking was because when he uttered those words, he knew something left him. You know, the Bible said concerning Jesus, that woman with the issue of blood, she touched his garment. The Bible said Jesus knew that virtue, power left him. So when, why Isaac was shaking? Because he knew the thing had left him. Now let's continue. He said, have you not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said, behold, I have made him your Lord. And all his brethren have I given to him for servants, including you, Kenan. With corn and wine have I sustained him. John 6, 63 says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. But the words, the Lord Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and their life. When you come to Zion, to an anointed place, and people speak anointed words, that's where your blessing is. Those words go in, that's where your blessing is. Don't look for the blessing anywhere. It's anointed words. Are you here, somebody? He said, I've sustained him. How? With words. What shall I do now unto you, my son? And Esau said to his father, Baba, have you not one blessing, my father? Hey, hey, well, well, well. Bless me, even me also, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept from his heart. I hear somebody. But let me tell you something. When a man or when a, in the, when a man or woman are carriers of the blessing, it's a spiritual thing. It can't completely finish. Esau was still the man's son. Even though he knew that that main one had gone. He's weeping. Esau's weeping touched Jacob and, and uh, touched Israel and uh, so touched Isaac. Abed, and Isaac shook himself. Look at this. And his, Isaac, his father, answered and said, he, I, thought, I thought he said he had, he had given, uh, uh, what's his name? Jacob everything. But he shook himself. Are you here, somebody? And Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. By thy sword shall thy live. Unfortunately, you will serve your brother. But it shall come to pass that when you have the dominion, you will break his yoke from off of your neck. If you look at the Hebrew translation, it means when you become restless. Resist the devil and he will flee. Oh. Resist him. Just because money is not flowing today does not mean it will not flow tomorrow. Just because where you are now is where you, where you think you are. That blessing is on you. Shake yourself. You're not out of options. I said you're not out of options. Just because they say they don't like you. They, are they God? Shake yourself. The blessing is upon your life. Face your front and face your God. Are you here somebody? And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing where his father blessed him. But you see there's many, much to learn in this story which is not our subject now but there's much to learn in this story. Don't ever be a profane fellow. Don't joke with your position in God's house. <laughs> Somebody say, oh they're just using me, they're just using me. They're just, Thank God that God is using you. God doesn't ever use or dump. The story has not ended yet. The story has not ended yet. 
We say, I just get angry, look at them every time. They're there. Every time at them, just they shine. You don't understand anything. <laughs> Somebody can be shining, yet not be lifted by God. Somebody can be in the forefront, yet be struggling. It's the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich. And I didn't know so. That's why especially people like us preachers that are always in the forefront. I don't deceive myself. If I'm not doing what I should be doing, somebody sweeping in God's house and me, I'm just there on the billboard. Can be enjoying more than me. God's no respect our persons. His faithfulness is looking at no title. I don't even know why I'm going this way. Psalm 45, 6 to 8. The fragrance or smell of favor. When this thing comes on you, you become irresistible. Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. They're trying to lock you up here. God is opening way for you there. When this thing comes on you, you become unresistible. Irresistible. Psalm 45, verse 6. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of, of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Scepter is the thing that kings used to rule their staff of office. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Look at verse 8. All your garments smell of myrrh, aloes, cassia, out of the ivory palaces, wherefore they have made thee glad. That's what I want. I just, I like to soak in God's presence because I know when my smell changes, it's not about who I am, what I have or not have. Men must respond to me. All your garments, the smell of myrrh, aloes, cassia. This is the anointing. This is what the anointing oil is made out of. And you know, every one of us has it. As every one of us has it. So we're talking about the fragrance of favor, the fragrance, smell, scent of favor. Number one. Number two, we just mentioned it here, verse six, verse seven, verse seven. The fragrance of favor and the oil of favor is the anointing. You soak in the precious oil and your smell changes. My God. <laughs> I, hope you know that, I hope you know that David was not the preferred one. I hope you know that David was the ostracized one. Most church theologians believe, Bible theologians believe that when David said, in sin did my mother conceive me, most, of, most people agree that most likely David was the product of his father's fling. Illegitimate child. So it's always kept there. And he had freckles, freckles, you know. All this spot on his face. And he was a redhead. So he looked like a nuisance. So he was always there with the sheep in the field. But David turned his affliction into intimacy with God. May somebody learn something here today. When men push you away and write you off, turn that place into an altar and develop intimacy with God. When that oil comes upon you, they will come and look for you. The secret to the anointing is when you press those grapes, then the oil comes. Turn your, use your affliction. Use that time. It seems you are forgotten and you are in a wilderness. Use that time to develop intimacy with God. Let the squeezing of life make you press into God's presence. When that oil starts coming out of you, you become irresistible. Let me tell you, when God rises on your behalf, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. You become the preferred one. That's why you should matter. You should, you should matter, it should matter more to you what God thinks about you. That doesn't mean you should become rude and unmannerly. No, but it should matter more to you what God thinks about you. Because when that oil starts oozing out of you, see, 10,000 witch doctors, all the kings of this earth and half of their mad wives can stop you from rising. Thou love is righteous and hate is wicked. Therefore, God thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Hi. Kai. Kai. This boy here, I live and breathe for the anointing. I live and breathe for the anointing. It's the most important thing. How much, how much will man do for you? Kai. So there's a fragrance of favor, there's an oil of favor. Now, this oil of favor produces a fragrance of favor, smell, scent of favor. And this oil and scent of favor now puts you on the pathway of favor, which is called the pathway of life. 
There's a place, there's a pathway for every one of us where your harvests are already prepared. Psalm 16 verse 11. Just like only God knew that there was a pathway through the Red Sea, he took them there. Everybody thought that it was like a death sentence, but the Bible said God knew there was a path through the seas. Just follow this, your God. The place where men think, oh, don't block, is the place. He said, don't worry, just be following me. As you appear there, where will just appear? There's a place of your harvest that only God knows. And he wants to keep that secret so that the devil will not mess it up. Just follow him. Sometimes think that when you're locked in and there's no way out, that's when God has organized your greatest miracle. That will show me the path. Now let's go to verse 5 first. Aye. Glory. The Lord is the portion of Dunkagon Works inheritance. I don't know about you. He's the portion of Dunkagon Works cup. He maintains my lot. Husband in the world can never finish. Wife can never finish. Miracle can never finish. Car can never finish. Breakthrough can never finish. He maintains my lot. We don't have to fight. I rejoice when God is blessing you. My own is tailor made. I don't want your own. It may be oversized or undersized. I want the one he has tailor made for me. Are you here somebody? The Lord is a portion of my inheritance of my cup. You maintain my lot. You guard over my inheritance. Your own, if it's your own, God will just blind everybody until you get there and enter. Verse 6. The lines are falling upon me in pleasant places. God is settling us in this season. No? He's just causing things to fall in place. He's just causing things to fall in place. Say, God is causing things to fall in place in my life on my behalf. Lines are falling upon me in pleasant places. Yay, I have a goodly heritage. Now verse 11. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, please. Classic, amplified classic translation. God has already prepared harvest for you. And in the name of Jesus, the favor of God is taking you there. God has already prepared paths of harvest for you. And in the name of Jesus, the favor of God is taking you there. God has right place, right time miracles for you. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are manifesting your life. People, places, and things are lining up, aligned to serve you in this hour. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10, Amplified Classic. Hallelujah. I quickly run through five minutes after this, the key to the fragrance, the oil, and this path of favor. They are linked together. The oil, the anointing, the fragrance of it. And then the pathway of favor. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew that we may do those things, works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? <laughs> Let me just not say that one. That we might do those things which he prearranged and made ready, for, taking parts with he, which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. I'm asking myself every day, God, why on earth did you make a straight line path? Full of favor for me to ascend to PFN Chairmanship Plateau. What am I? What is this? The straight line path to the favor of God. Taking path which He prepared ahead of time. That we should walk in them. Living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. Say the pathway of favor. Say the hand of God is upon me. Say, my smell has become like the smell of a field which Yahweh has blessed. Say, I'm finding my already prepared pathways of favor. The Lord told me, I'm bringing you and your family, this church, 
into seasons of rest and restoration. The lies have fallen upon you in pleasant places. You have a goodly heritage. Listen, dormant seeds are coming to full harvest. Harvests that have been hanging over your life are coming to full manifestation. Listen to me. Many of you, you will be glad that you are rejected. You will be glad that you are disappointed because this is your time. You will be glad. You will tell yourself, if I had not been afflicted, I would not have been positioned to enter this glory. Many of you almost go and pay your enemies and say, thank you for ganging up against me. Thank you for rejecting me. Thank you for disappointing me. Favored men, favored women can never be disappointed. Every disappointment, seemingly so, is rather a divine appointment. There is a smell of favor on you. There is a fragrance of favor on you. You cannot be ignored. You cannot be rejected. That favor is turning the place of your affliction into the place of your fruitfulness in the name of Jesus Christ. I've lived this message in the past three months. I've lived it. 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 I know the anointing flows from the top down. So I'm preaching this message by commandment. By commandment. By divine instruction. You can't be ignored. Many of you, you're about to see the things that your affliction has prepared you for. You're about to see the reason why you are delayed. You're about to see the reason why you are disappointed. You're about to see that God is fitting you for something. Many of you, you never caught sight of it in your wildest visions or dreams. Because if you had, God would, you would have messed up the plan. But it would just appear to you. It's called pathways of favor. Open to you. And those pathways, as you walk in them, you will be restored. Many of you will be healed from emotional damage. Sexual abuse. Disappointments, things that have stripped you of dignity. As you walk in this path of favor, it will restore you from deep within to without. The lines are falling upon you in pleasant places. We're talking about already arranged places, prearranged places. You see, this oil of favor is the anointing will cause this smell and fragrance to come out of you and to arrange the path. It will set a charm on people. Don't worry, God doesn't do anything evil. It will charm them for your good. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. I said, you hear somebody? Yes, sir. <laughs> when they tell you that for the first time in history, 90-something percent of elders say you must, you must be the one. For which reason? But you see, when we begin to find the reason for it, then we can be useful to God. Then we can be useful to God. Lift up your hands and thank him. Let me run through this five minutes. Please sit. The key to the fragrance, oil, and path of favor is faith. Say faith. faith. Say faith in God. Mark 11, 2, our Lord Jesus Christ said, have faith in God. Hebrews eleven six 6, it says, without faith is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a reward of they that diligently seek him. 1 John 5, 4 and 5. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Christ. You believe in the person of Jesus and you believe in what he did. This faith that brings this favor is faith in what Christ has done. Are you here, somebody? This favor is bought and paid for by what Christ did for you. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. I said, are you here, somebody? Now, this faith in God is manifested in two ways. Number one, is manifested through obedience. Number two, is manifested through sacrifice. Just give me five minutes. Let me just try and quickly. In Genesis 12, 1 to 4, we said, Abraham, leave where you are. Leave your father, your mother, your comfort zone. Go to the place where I prepared for you. And the Bible said in verse 3, or verse 4, and verse 3, and verse 4, and Abraham went. Yes, we can say he went with Lord, but at least he went. Genesis chapter 22, when God asked him to give him his only son. The Bible said Abraham obeyed. So if you want the blessing of Abraham to manifest in your life, do the works of Abraham. Abraham was ruthlessly obedient to God's voice. Every time you respond in obedience to God's instruction, the faith of God shows up. It happened to Peter when he gave the Lord his boat. Are you here somebody? Luke chapter 5. We've been toiling all night, Master, other, other, but nevertheless, at thy word. 
And Bible said when he had done it, when he had let down the net, even though it was still partial disobedience, he didn't give up, he didn't put down all the nets, he just put down one broke, one torn net, but the Lord still had mercy on him. You see, it's favor we're living in. Your ears are unblocked tonight in the name of Jesus. You will hear fresh instructions from heaven in the name of Jesus. The instructions you heard and heard and refused to obey and that they seem to have become dormant, you will start hearing them again in the name of Jesus. This time as you launch out, you will catch a drought of fish in the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 2, verse 5. Whatsoever, Jesus' mother told the people, whatsoever he tells you to do, you do it. As we break bread today, your ears, God will dig out. Your eyes, He will open. Your heart, He will sensitize. And you start getting fresh unction, promptings from heaven. And as you step out in that, you're stepping into favor and harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. I say, in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no real faith without obedience. John, Romans 16, verses 25 and 26, when Paul was talking about the glorious gospel of Jesus entrusted to him, he said, it's for the obedience of faith to all nations. No faith without obedience. Oh. If you believe God, you'll obey him. you do what he said. Are you here, somebody? So this faith in God is manifested through practical obedience. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? And this faith in God is manifested through sacrifice. Oh, I don't have the time tonight. We stand on the sacrifice of Jesus, but we also need to understand that there are sacrifices in the New Testament. These sacrifices don't earn us anything, but it is our love response to God. Are you here, somebody? Genesis chapter 12, I beg, I beg about Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Do not be conformed to this, but be transformed by what? The renew of your mind that you might prove that which, is, which is, that which is what? Good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Are you here somebody? Yes, I said, are you here somebody? Yes, and then he talks about us yielding up our bodies to him. Present your bodies as a what? Living what? Ah, is this not New Testament? Sacrifice means that you are putting down your flesh and doing something convenient out of love. When you're talking about giving, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and 8, he said, prove the sincerity of your love by your giving. Oh, hallelujah. So there are sacrifices in the New Testament. They are not going to earn us salvation. Only Christ's sacrifice can earn us salvation. But when you want to see the release of the blessing, you have to walk in Abraham's footsteps. Abraham was ruthlessly obedient. Are you here somebody? Glory to God. Philippians chapter 4, verses 15 to 19, Paul was talking to the church in Philip. I said, but you know that, that apart from that, <laughs> since I came from my disciple, no other church has, shown, has communicated with me like you concerning giving and receiving. He said, these your sacrifices, they are well-pleasing unto God, going up as a sweet smelling savour. Are you here somebody? As long as we live, if we want to keep breaking into new levels of favour, sacrifice must become a lifestyle. We don't sit down and wait for the result of yesterday's sacrifice to sacrifice today. That's unbelief. We joyfully keep sacrificing to God. Knowing that he's a faithful God. He will not shortchange us. Are you here somebody? I say, are you here somebody? So we stand believing in what Christ has done for us. He's the author of our favor. Then we live a life of practical obedience and continual sacrifice as we're prompted by God's spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Constantly showing the Lord Jesus that there's nothing we have or own that's more important than him. The favor of God is just unleashed anyhow. Are you here somebody? From the Old Testament to this, you discover this. Look at Noah now. After the flood, in Genesis chapter 8, from verse 20, he took those animals that were rare and scarce. Not thinking about how they will be recharged. And he offered it, the best of them unto God. And the Bible said God smelled a sweet smell. And he vowed, I will never again curse this earth. Sacrifice is part of the believer's life. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? I believe that as we break bread today, God will remember and honor your sacrifices. I said, God will remember and honor your sacrifices. I said, God will honor and remember your sacrifices. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the sacrifice of Jesus is very important. And the sacrifice of the believer, our, our, our life of sacrifice, is so critical to unleashing the favor of God. 
Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands to heaven. Tonight, I want you to remember that blood has been shed for you. I said blood has been shed for you. Just like that scenario with Israel in Egypt. After all the signs and wonders and miracles had been wrought, Pharaoh's heart was still hard and God said, don't worry, Moses. Just cool. I will do one more thing. One. Tack. One more thing. After that, he said, Pharaoh will eject you. He will thrust you out. Me, I'm believing God, though, that at communion table today, as we symbolize the broken body and shed blood of Jesus, something will thrust you out. Something will thrust you out. Something will mark your life. There will be a fresh scent of favor coming out of you. They will look for you. They will call you. You will receive strategic calls. Strategic remembrances will come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The places where your, the, the harvest on your labors are, they will start calling for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Suddenly you will pop up to the limelight. Suddenly you will pop up to the radar. Suddenly you will become so impressionable to somebody's heart. Are you here tonight? I said, are you here tonight? But this favor of God heals sicknesses and diseases. My dear, you will not live all your life with that disease. That disease is cursed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something reversed in your life tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They will find you. You will become admirable in the name of Jesus. You will become amenable in the name of Jesus Christ. To thrust you out. I know I have believers in church tonight. I came with a word from heaven. Marked with the favor. And the fragrance of favor will start shining from your life. In this new place you will be, many people will be angry, but that is where it will stop. They will gnash their teeth, but they can't do nothing. As they are gnashing their teeth, you are rising. And they are paralyzed to do anything. They will just be watching you like film show. Rising and rising and rising and rising. In this place where, where we stand today, and in this place upon which I stand today, there is nothing like too late. There is nothing like hopeless. There is nothing like it's not your turn. There is nothing like your opportunity has passed. In this place upon which we stand tonight, the favor of God profusely abounds. Answers every question. Dissolves every doubt. Moves you. And gives you an appointment with your inheritance. In the name of Jesus Christ. So today, receive the oil of favor. Today, receive the fragrance of favor. Today, be reinitiated into the pathways of favor. You can't make a mistake here. The Bible says, in this place, even fools will not err or make a mistake. Even fools, even not dare, who can't make a mistake here. Because there's a charm on you. <laughs> you better believe, oh. You better act like believer, or you are act like believers, oh. Because angels are observing you right now to see how you're responding to this. I'm not joking with you. You better act like you believe this thing, oh. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Taking paths that he has prearranged and made ready for you. Arranging the good life. But remember, not only will this favor flow in your life, but you will dispense it to others. Some of you are going to be more useful to God than you have ever been before. More useful to humanity than you've ever been before. Because ultimately, this is the reason for this overflow of favor. It's not to just keep piling and piling and piling. It's to make you useful to the plans and purpose of God. Congratulations. 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 They will look for you. They will find you. will find you. Saul went and hid himself in the stuff. That's what, that's, what, that's what disqualified him. The Bible says concerning Saul, Samuel told him, he said, he said, in those days when you were small in your own eyes, you want to see this favor continue your life? As God lifts you, please remain small in your own eyes. Don't forget your humble disposition that attracted God to you to make you lift you. If you remain small in your own eyes, there will be no end to that lifting. 
remain small in your eyes and your inheritance will keep enlarged. Something is happening on the communion table today. I lie not to you in Christ Jesus. Most of the messages I have, I just discovered that this one thing about my life. Most of the messages I get, I, it, it comes by the word of the Lord. I'm not smart like that. But the word of the Lord came to me, the fragrance of favor. Usually when these messages come, the Lord gives me an outline. But me, myself, I want to, I want to be in the service as I'm preaching, I'm listening. Because I want to hear what the Lord is saying. Because I didn't know three quarters of what I'm telling you now. I was waiting for utterance. It's a fragrance. It's going to come upon you. I'm telling you. It's going to be like you're being soaking in, in, how do I put it? What's the, in, how do you put it? Um, what's, what's when you say a scent is very nice? It's a great fragrance. Fragrant oils. You're just, and this, this one is just going to, it's going to shut open men's heart. This one is going to happen. Whether, this, is, this is the favor. It puts a spiritual charm on men. They can be purposing their heart that they will not do it. But as you come, they're doing what, the thing they say they won't do, they do it times 10. It's a charm. Whether you're APC or PDP or PPP or ZZZ or XYZ, nothing has to do with this. It's a charm. And that's what we're here for today. I'll break that bread, online or on-site. You have crossed over. You're marked with this favor. It's going to be like a, it's going to be like you'll be soaking precious fragrant oil spiritually. 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 You come and tell me. There's some people where your goods are, they'll just want you in their space. They'll just want you around that. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I just want you around me. And you'll be there seeing and hearing everything you need to say and hear. <laughs> ah, if, you want, if you want to serve God, make yourself God. Oh. He's the promoter of men. Oh. Not be this eye service where people do. Lift up those hands and thank God. If you can pray in other tongues, pray in other tongues. Just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. There's a transaction going on right now. It's a transaction. Can't, your days of toiling are over forever. Your days of struggling are over forever. Oh, Naphtali, satisfied with favor, full of the blessing of the Lord. Possess the north, possess the south, possess the west, possess the east. Oh Lord, by your favor you have made my mountain strong. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Somebody shout favor! Somebody shout it again, favor! Somebody shout it again, favor! Yes, 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 yes. Lord, we've shared your word the best we know how. Now stretch forth your hand, we ask of you, and do the needful in the lives of your people, online or on site. Let there be streams of favor that will match every desire. Let there be streams of favor that will actualize every desire. Let there be streams of favor released that will confirm these words with signs and wonders following to every believer in this house. Lord, we thank you. We honor your sacrifice today. We thank you because this altar table is blessed today. We partake of your broken body, your shed blood. The price has been paid for this favor. This favor is a tool, a weapon, a sickle in our hands. There's an escalation of the same. An escalation of the same. There's a mark of favor coming upon your people tonight. The fragrance of favor rests perpetually in their house. This favor will fill your stores, fill your hands to the overflow. This favor will bring you into seasons of rest and restoration. Thank you, Lord. We receive grace to remain small in our eyes. No matter how high you lift us, to remain small in our eyes. Father, we thank you. Lord, I give you my choicest praise. All that I am before your throne. 
This mark of favor go with you in the name of Jesus. Let this fragrance of divine favor settle on you in the name of Jesus. Let it make every empty place in your life full in the name of Jesus Christ. 
It makes every crooked path straight in the name of Jesus. It exalts every valley in the name of Jesus. It makes every valley, or exalts every valley, makes every mountain a plain in the name of Jesus. Yes, this favor fills your bands with plenty. This favor protects you. This favor defends you. This favor promotes you. This favor exalts you. This favor fulfills you. In the precious name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Says upon me, say the favor of God is upon me like rain, like dew from heaven. Say I'm marked with the fragrance of God's favor. Say it's all over me now. Say I'll talk like it. I'll act like it. I'll walk like it. I'll believe like it. I'll rejoice like it. And I'll enjoy it all the days of my life. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Glory.